You mentioned the word democracy uh, a couple of times. It, it feels like things have changed. How would you describe the threat environment at the moment? We've certainly heard a level of concern uh, from across the political spectrum about the ability to run a normal uh, election campaign. And that interface between the public and the people who um, are going to be charged with running the country is really important. So we should be concerned about the overall direction of travel here, even if at the moment we're still successfully facilitating what, what needs to occur. Uh, it's a conversation we must have. People are generally more anxious, more angry. Uh, I think that's driven significantly by social media. A couple of things, the tendency for it to give you more of what you already believe to be true, and the tendency for it to give you emotion and outrage. You know, outrage is the currency of social media, and so that feeds into a level of angst, and then you get the people at the extremes of that who are prepared to move towards you know, physical expressions of, of that anger. As a small country, uh, which has enjoyed traditionally pretty good social cohesion, we should be able to do some things. Uh, we're losing the ability to dialogue, uh, to resolve issues through civil conversation as opposed to other means, and that's something that I think the country should be thinking about. I don't think it's a blip. I, I do believe that the trends we're seeing now in terms of polarisation are a lasting feature of the way we're engaging with information on social media particularly. What we're seeing is, I believe, part of a long-term trend that would be occurring but for COVID. What I think COVID did was pour real fuel on the fire because of the extreme measures that uh, were required to respond to it and then the way that caused people to react. Uh, things may improve a little as we get further away from that. Centrally, we can monitor a wide range of people who are expressing disturbing views uh, and check you know, whether we need to respond to them with an enforcement uh, approach. So we do, we do that centrally. But locally, police rely on strong relationships with the communities that they police in. And if you go to the smallest subset, our one, two and three person stations around the country, the way they operate and police is by having good relationship with the whole community. And that does uh, smooth over a lot, a lot of these problems, except that uh, many people are engaged in an online and international community that isn't so much shaped by what's happening in the physical environment. You know, I think the fear of what could happen is sometimes worse than the reality. And so uh, in some ways we need to keep this in perspective. Um, we need to recognise that we're still in a very safe country uh, and you know, I think live our, live our lives normally, but also understand that the environment is um, you know, perhaps riskier than it was and, and common sense you know, approaches in terms of how much we put ourselves out there online um, and so on are, are sensible things to do. I believe that we will adapt. I think we're seeing the starts of some, some moves to try and respond to these problems internationally. Uh, and hopefully uh, we can see a little bit more cohesion come back in as we move further away from the pandemic and all that came with that. I believe ultimately democracies will adapt, they will respond to this because what we're seeing is a bit of a threat to our democracy, our, our way of organising our country. Uh, and then we need local solutions as well and of course police is playing its part in terms of uh, looking at the extremes of this and making sure that we're doing our best to monitor uh, what's going on.